If you clicked on this video to learn more about parametric design, then congratulations! This video is made exactly for you! Well, I mean, this video is not specifically made for you, but by the end of it, you'll definitely have learned more about the history and usage of parametric design. So, let's dive in! The term parametric originates in mathematics, but the meaning might be a bit blurry. That's why we need to dig deeper into the origins. Para means beside in Greek, while meter comes from metron, which means measure. Combined together, it is a numerical or other measurable factor, forming one of a set that defines a system or sets the condition of its operation. I know, it's a bit complicated, but hear me out. Parametric design is basically a process that is based on algorithms, enabling the expression of parameters and rules that define a relationship between design intent and design result. It's a paradigm in design where the relationship between elements is used to manipulate and form complex geometries and structures. If that wasn't clear enough, we can go way back into history. One of the earliest examples of parametric design is the upside-down model of churches by Antonio Gaudi. In his designs for the church of Colonia Guel and Sagrada Familia, he created a model of strings that were hanged down with weights to create complex vaulted ceilings and catenary arches. By adjusting the position of the weights, he could alter the shape of the catenary arches and see how it influenced the whole model. He then placed a mirror on the bottom of the model to see how it should look upside down. Gaudi quite literally invented a new kind of parametric design process, which can be referred to as analog computing. This happened long before the invention of the computer. I guess we can say he set the parameters for what's to come. No? Okay. The first person who used the term parametric architecture was architect Luigi Moretti. Moretti's stadium model is an early example of how a building's form can derive from 19 parameters. It was displayed in the 1960 Parametric Architecture exhibition. Around the same time, Gaudi's methods of computing were enlarged by German architect Frei Otto, which included surfaces derived from soap films and paths found through wool dipped in liquid in the 1960s. Otto calls these experiments form-finding, which is a phrase that sets the experimental nature of parametric modeling. The digitization of these experiments became available when Ivan Sutherland founded Sketchpad in 1963, the first interactive computer-aided design program where designers could use a light pen to draw lines, arcs, and geometries. Further, in 1982, when computers were gradually becoming more affordable to the general public, AutoCAD was released, which played a significant role in the development of the computer design industry. Though it is fair to mention that AutoCAD wouldn't add parametric functionalities to the software until its 2010 version. Regardless, in 1988, the first commercially successful parametric software, Pro Engineer, was founded. The developers also created the first parametric building software for architects and building design professionals, which was Revit, a contraction of Revise Instantly in the year 2000. This is definitely a lot of information, but it is information in the end, and it doesn't stop here. In the year 1993, French software company Dassault System incorporated Pro Engineer's parametric features into the 3D software CATIA. At the time, CATIA was generally used for the aerospace industry. But when the architecture office Gary Partners employed Rick Smith, who had worked on the space shuttle and got involved in medical devices, things started to escalate. Apparently, a staff from Gary Partners asked Smith, do you know how to build a building in the shape of a fish? And he told them, a fish is kind of aerodynamic. Sure. So that's how Smith got involved with Gary. Smith played an important role in the realization of architecturally challenging projects like the Barcelona Fish and the Guggenheim Museum and Bilbao, which are both major projects in the computer-aided design industry. So, to become a successful parametric designer, working as an aerospace engineer is the way to go. I'm kidding, please don't do that. In the past decades, parametric modeling has made its way into projects through the scripting interfaces of the software packages. Scripting interfaces allow designers to write code and automate parts of the software. Today, most parametric designers are feeding off the emergence of the visual interfaces through visual programming, which involves using programs, not as text, but rather as diagrams. Notable precedents from the 1990s include Max, which is popular with musicians, and Houdini, which is popular with visual effects artists. 
Today, major visual scripting interfaces, which include Grasshopper by Robert McNeil and Associates, Generative Competence by Bentley Systems, and Dynamo by Revit Autodesk, are based on graphs that map the flow of relations from parameters through user-defined functions, usually resulting in the generation of a geometry. Changes to these parameters automatically redraw the geometry, a functional way to create a parametric model. Major architects of our generation who have strongly utilized parametric design in their projects include Frank Gehry, who is known for taking organic shapes to the next level, Zaha Hadid, who is one of the most widely known figures from an architecture firm that has adopted a parametric style, Santiago Calatrava, who has pushed the boundaries of what architecture can be, and many more. One of the other early architects that used computers to generate architecture was Greg Lin. His blob and fold architecture are notable examples in this sector. For instance, Lin's embryological house established the parameters for its geometry using a software called MicroStation. Lin imported the file into Maya to produce smoothly rendered surfaces that resemble geometries usually related to automotive and aeronautic industries. It is one of the first projects to use NURBS or spline curves. We can observe the usage of parametric design mostly in buildings, but it covers any field of design, from architecture to engineering, interior design or fashion. Parametric design has no limits, as it feeds off the power of computer-based methodologies to create organic, continuous and fluid configurations. And with its application, we inevitably surround ourselves with unique forms of representation and modify variables almost instantaneously, resulting in a flexible and adaptable design. The 21st century digital tools used for architecture and design are innovating themselves at such a pace that it's getting harder to keep track of every new software that comes out. However, it is certain that we have come such a long way in such a short span of time in the last few decades that designers of the present and the future have been provided with the ultimate freedom and expression techniques with every new development that comes along. If you are interested in learning more about using these digital tools, make sure to check out Pacademy's workshops in the links below. Pacademy is an educational platform powered by Parametric Architecture to spread the idea of using parametric design and computational tools in architecture. Pacademy has broadened its collaboration with pioneering architects and designers, dealing with diverse and numerous topics such as computational design, 3D printing, robotic fabrication, procedural methods, space architecture, metaverse design, design in VR, AR, and many more topics. You can register and join the live workshops or watch the previous studio's workshop recordings. To learn more, you can visit parametricarchitecture.com slash pacademy. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell notification to not miss any new uploads. See you at the next episode.